guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am again participating unofficially in the YouTube Artist Collective. And this time around our theme was Grimm's Fairy Tales and I decided to stray away from some of the more well-known fairy tales you might know from Disney's reinterpretations like Snow White or Cinderella, things like that, and research Grimm's Fables and look into some more obscure stories. <laughs> And of course, I had to pick something that had to do with animals and plants because that is what we do here. So for this illustration, I decided to do something a little bit more on the symbolic and simpler side. Uh, it wasn't a simple idea to get down. It actually took quite a while for me to come up with this illustration concept, I guess, but I feel like the overall execution is fairly simple and clean and I'm pretty happy with it. This story is called The Three Snake Leaves and the overall story is actually a little bit longer than this little snapshot I took uh, with my illustration. There's a couple and there's lots of death involved which is pretty typical of a lot of real fairy tales and Grimm's fairy tales specifically but there is this moment where the main character is starving to death and he is attacked by a snake but to defend himself he cuts it into three pieces and another snake comes along and brings these magical leaves that basically revives and restores the snake. And there's a whole bunch more to the story and it continues on and on and I sort of ignored that part because I thought this idea of using these leaves to revive this animal was a pretty interesting story. And when I made this design, I wanted the leaves to basically be reconnecting the snake. If you look closely at the illustration, you'll see that there is a separation, an actual separation, and you see the cut through um, in the snake where the leaves are, and I wanted the leaves to be sort of reconnecting the snake. Now in doing this design, I ended up making the snake actually four different sections, but we'll just ignore that for now. <laughs> so I guess I'll talk a little bit about the materials I'm using for this illustration. The paper I typically use and still use pretty regularly because it's inexpensive and fairly good quality is the Canson XL watercolor, which is 140 pounds. And I have been playing around with my somewhat brand new uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus watercolor, um, liquid watercolor, which I'm still getting used to. Um, I actually really want to do a sort of first impressions, possibly review, but at the very least a first impressions video here in the next couple weeks because I've never used liquid watercolor before and it's basically in these little bottles and it's very concentrated. So you see me watering it down in my palette to the left here. And I feel like it's a little bit different than using tube paints or any other kinds of paints that I would typically use. So, I have been using that and I typically use these two round Princeton watercolor brushes that I got quite a while ago in a just a random pack that I found at I think it was a Tuesday morning so pretty inexpensive and I love how long the bristles are it's a synthetic brush and the size I use most of the time and right here is a size 10 
round and the smaller one that I use for some of the details is a size 4. So I went over my materials. If you have any other questions about these or how I use them, please leave a comment down below and hopefully I'll be able to link all of my materials um, or at least have a list of them down in the description if you want to check them out. So like I mentioned, I really wanted to go with a fairly simple concept and um, overall uh, kind of composition, I guess. And I think this actually ended up looking a little bit like a tattoo design, which I, I'm pretty uh, pretty okay with. <laughs> I think it's pretty interesting. I felt like it came out a little bit more graphic than I typically do, and I thought that was sort of an interesting experiment. <laughs> the most important thing for me was I wanted to make sure to get this video out on time, and I had a few concerns regarding that since I just got finished doing Vlogoween where I have a video go up every day in October. I actually think I combined two days one of the weekends so I ended up doing 30 videos while doing Inktober and my last video from two days ago is actually my flip through for Inktober. And so I've been really busy <laughs> and yesterday was the only day in a little over a month that I haven't been editing a video either super early in the morning or late at night. And so it was nice to have a little bit of a break, but I had to jump right back in to making art videos with this one since we needed to get it up if I wanted to get my video up with the rest of the official uh, YouTube Artist Collective members. I'm really excited to see what others have come up with. I was really excited about this theme because I tend to love various fairy tales and folklore and things like that and I would love to add more of those kind of concepts into my art. Um, if you're new around here, I typically do a lot of sort of whimsical watercolor and marker and a little bit of digital pieces that are sort of bright and pastel in colors and are sort of playful and sometimes surreal. And I have a background in children's illustration and would love to pursue that further in the future. I didn't have a particular topic for this video, I just figured I would come on here and chat a little bit about what I'm doing on screen and my thought process, and yeah. <laughs> so for my line work, I actually have really been loving using colored pencils. So these are Prismacolor Premier pencils, and for the outline of the snake, I actually use three different shades of purple and a shade of green for the leaves. And then the last finishing details here are white gel pen, which is just a white jelly roll. And I wanted to make it look like the leaves were magically healing the snake. And so there's some sparkles and um, kind of twinkles here and there. And that's it. Uh, just like the official members of the YouTube Artist Collective, this piece is for sale, the original. I'm still on the fence if I'm going to make prints of it. If you're interested in a print of this, which would obviously be a lot more budget friendly, let me know down below and I will hopefully try to get that in my stock. But if not, this original is available in my Store Envy store. That's where I typically house my originals, and you will find a link for that down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I hope you had a creatively fulfilled day today. And enjoy this awesome weekend. Until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.